A little crazy enough? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna trenches. <laughs> you have here, Doug. Is it off? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, don't brush it on me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Born ready. Yeah, I know that's right. All right, here we go. On five, four, three. <laughs> you know, you change your tone. Two, one. <laughs> okay. There we go. Silly. Right there. Oh. <clears throat> Three points to the men. <laughs> point point number one. If you're a, that? <coughs> keep on going. I'll just go. <coughs> Oh my god, something just got caught up. There's some water right there. <coughs> I know I read your last card the last time you <laughs> We played it off real what good. What did I say the last one? If you just... If you just wilding out. Wilding out. Wilding out's the last one. The second one is... Well, I know the first one. You don't... If you... You need to... I know wilding out. Third one. What? What? You need to what? I, I, I know. Just I know oh, wilding out. Oh, I got okay. that part. It's just a point of reference. If you're out. a man... If you're that man... Who hurt your wife. Okay. Who hurt your wife. Okay. <clears throat> did I say that in the beginning? That you've already seen it and then take a look at it? No. Mm-mm. I didn't mention it Nothing. at all, mm -mm. so it was, it was all it's smooth. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be our original intro. Instead I would like of, I would like for it to. Oh, okay, that's fine because I didn't like how it our first one was. And then I will bleed into that. Okay? okay. All right, that's good. All right, let's see it. We're done. Thank you, honey. That was that was one of the easier takes you've done. We got a lot going on this week, so I'm I'm glad that you're making you're keeping it simple today. I believe a man should never uh, make a woman feel less than um, anything, nor should we belittle nor disrespect her in private, but most importantly, in public. This is what I believe that a husband should never do in a marriage, is to emotionally abandon his wife. Not just to mention leaving the house or abandoning his wife, but emotional abandonment. It's one thing I believe that a husband should never do to his wife, is to emotionally abandon his wife. Don't ignore your wife. Don't take your wife for granted. And don't assume how she feels. Husband should never claim spiritual superiority over his wife and what do I mean by that even if my connection is greater to God and my command of the word is is greater than my wife I should never hold that over her head I should lead by example and share uh, what I know um, in a very wise way, in a loving way, so that my marriage, my wife, will grow closer not only to God, but then grow closer to me. And uh, for me, what comes to mind is I'm thinking how a husband should never um, compare his wife to other women, including his own mom or her mom, um, you know, or just because I think doing that, it tears away at her security and confidence as a woman. Um, I believe a wife should know that she is priority. And when those seeds are, are planted, you got to deal with the, the weeds that grow. You got to deal with the insecurity, the doubt you know, all of that because that's what you planted in her. Um, it takes some time to pull all that out. A man 
should never entertain outside women or ex-girlfriends or ex-wives or any female that's unapproved by the wife. That's the one thing that a man should not. One thing a wife should never do to her husband is emasculate and devalue his presence and role in their home based on her sense of power, educational, career, or financial success, even if she believes it towers over his. These things should be celebrated together as a loving couple and as each other's helpmate, but never used to start an argument, win an argument, or end an argument. And it should never be used to shut down the husband's ideas, goals, or plans for their home. One of the things that happens when a wife does that is that it gives a husband a sense that he is less than or not valued or not respected. And if a wife remembers that you are the helpmate not a person to emasculate, it would really bring a home a lot more love and support. And I believe that it would help bring about a real transformation with regard to what the husband is experiencing in their marriage. Okay, one thing that I would say um, a wife should not do to their husbands is disrespect them. And what I mean by that is by, um, well, one, what you want to do is find out from your husband how, what it means to be respected. Most guys that I've spoken to, including Steve, my husband, have all said that, uh, that respect is one of the things that they don't receive from their wives. And sometimes that looks like degrading them in public or, or just saying something, it may not even be degrading. It could just be saying something that may be um, hurtful or embarrassing in front of others instead of uplifting. So one of the things I can use as an example is um, when Steve and I go through something and he is hurting me or not necessarily hurting me or doing something that I don't agree with, I don't necessarily tell him in front of others I'll wait till we have a, that private moment and we'll have that discussion and even when we have the discussion I present it in a respectful way again that's something that a wife would have to ask her husband and see how it is to respect him in that way all right here it is my husband things that you should never do to him is yell his name out in public or instigate a fight or argument in public. Don't do those two things. And I've never done it. I just know this because of past relationships that he has had and has shared with me. So I know to never yell his name out in public really loud frantic and screaming, screaming his name, or instigate a fight or argument.
and I'm Sonia. Thank you for watching. Today, we're going to be talking about the things that you should not do in your marriage. Mm -hmm. The things that you should not do in your marriage. Now, you had a chance to see um, several um, individuals who are married. Uh, you heard what the men said to the men, and you heard what the wives said to the wives. We wanted to give you, um, other than our voice, we, we, we ask people that to, we ask them that question, what mm -hmm. do you think are some of the things that you should not do in your marriage? And the men are speaking to the men. And so they came from their heart. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything that we scripted them to say. They came from their heart and it's coming <clears throat> from uh, individuals who want to see marriages be successful. And that's why they did it. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to, and I, we wanted them to share with you what we are passionate about. So it was good to hear what they said. Now let's, we're going to say this. There are marriages that are great. Mm -hmm. Marriages that, you know, it's just phenomenal marriages. There are marriages that are good marriages. That means that you're getting along. Getting along. No one's talking about divorce, separation, hurting mm -hmm. somebody. You're doing good. Mm -hmm. Then there's the fair marriages. There's some bumps, some heavy situations, you know, you're working them out, but you know, you got someone sleeping on the couch, they come back the next day. Someone slams the door, they come back and apologize. Those are the fair marriages. And then you have the marriages that are bad. Hmm. And those are the marriages that are constantly arguing, talking about divorce, talking about separation. And then you have the ones that are just, I'm trying to think of a name for those below bad. Off the Richter scale. Fragile. Just really, really fragile. And to a point where there's behaviors that are taking place that are not necessarily perpetuated by the other person, but that you're choosing to treat that person in a way that they shouldn't be treated. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's some things that the spouse may perpetuate something. They may say something that triggers it. It's a continuous, ongoing thing. We really want to talk. So this is a very specific kind of conversation. Uh, so if the shoe fits, you might want to just lace that thing up and wear it. <laughs> the thing and, about it is when people are in that state of mind, they're not watching these vlogs. That's my point. I'm glad you said and they're that. they're not getting help. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're going to suggest. Mm -hmm. Aha. Aha. So we're going to talk to the men. I'm going to talk to the men for about maybe four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. Sony's going to talk to the women. And again, we're talking to a particular group of individuals in their marriages, male and female, that have lost their everlasting globstopper mind. And, and so we, we suggest that you either copy, send, record, say, <laughs> hey, check it out, slide it into their email. Put it in the bathroom when they're it, getting ready for hit work. Hit the button. <laughs> At the right time that I'm saying something to the man that mm. needs to hear it, at the right time Sonia is saying something to the wife that needs to hear it. So be creative because we do know, Sonia, your point is, is valid. We do know that there are people, those, those individuals don't watch the videos. They don't go to any conferences. They don't get marriage counseling. Mm. They just mm -hmm. are doing their thing. So yeah. They're in their own vacuum and yeah. they think that where they are is okay. Yeah, and it's not. Yeah, well, they know it's not, but they don't come out of it. Right. So we want to make sure that um, you send these to the people that you need to send them to, the spouse. Mm -hmm. And if you know a couple or know an individual, your, your boy or your girlfriend, mm -hmm. and, and there's no getting through, we pray that this, because we believe that everyone needs to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Because see, in the Bible, <laughs> um, Nathan went to David and held him accountable. Mm -hmm. And that's King David. Mm -hmm. and, K and David could have killed him for even coming to him mm -hmm. to give him some type of analogy of mm -hmm. what he was doing mm -hmm. and what he did in comparison to some someone that stole something. True. <laughs> and Gad went to David too. True. So there's, there's a sense, there's a level of accountability. And we believe that, so. And uh, Derek's men on their man down, man up, Real talk, Marco Polo, they say a da uh, an isolated man is a dangerous man. That's one of the reasons he's dangerous. And he's a danger to himself and others around him. Because he has no accountability. There's no accountability. So there's no, there's no gauge 
for him to know whether how he's behaving is okay or not. You know, he's he's left his own thoughts and yeah. So devices. I'm going to speak to the men for about maybe five minutes, short and to the point. Speak, baby, speak. Come on, come on, watch it now. Speak. So, <laughs> so on a on a serious note, I think it's important the the group that I'm a part of, man down, man up, real talk. That's what we do. Some men can't handle it. They really can't, and, and that's cool. Uh, some men can handle it. They take it on the chin, they receive it, and they say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some changes. I hear what that man is saying, because he's coming from a place that God is saying to him to say it to another man. Mm -hmm. And it's not malicious, it's mm -hmm. not an anger, mm -hmm. it's just that we have a passion for married men to know that there's a better way to do what they're doing, and they cope poorly. So this is a conversation. So I had to I had to write it down because I I get all over the place, mm -hmm. and so I had to write down three points to men. This is to the men again. I'm affirming the men who are doing their thing. I'm affirming the men who are are kingdom men. Yeah, they're handling their business. Yeah, and I know a, a, a few men who are just at that place where they're not perfect men, but they're handling their business according to how God wants them to be a husband to mm -hmm. their wife and to their children. Well done, men. Well done. <laughs> And then there are those who needs a conversation. <laughs> and, and and I'm dressed like this. You want to know why? I, w I was going to ask, but you know, it's, event, it's, in, it's inevitable. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> that you would tell me. I'm dressed like this because I'm talking to men. And this, is, this is how I got to dress. Why? Because men don't hear a suit and tie. They think they're being preached to. Oh, they don't hear... Okay. Oh, there go Derek again. He all dressed up. He gonna give me something from the Bible. No, I'm not giving you nothing from the. Yeah, I am actually. Mm -hmm. But you know, you already do. So the look, the look is mm -hmm. connecting with oh, them. Oh, I see. They're so gonna they, see you they're and gonna they're gonna feel me. You. They're gonna feel me. Understand? This is war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just spiritual warfare. So you have to come dress. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think that's kind of hot. What's that? How you look? It's kind of hot. Yeah. Like hot what? Like hot sex. Come on, I'm watching now. <laughs> It's a grown man here. It's a grown man here. You, you can get yourself caught up. <laughs> I'm a little boy. You keep I can on, handle it. I'm a grown I'll, woman. I'll hit that pause button. I'm a, I'm a grown woman. I'm going to hit the pause button. You're going to get it. <laughs> grown man here. <laughs> May want to slide over a little bit. So that's why I'm dressed the way I'm You're dressed. You're so silly. All right. So all serious. We're going to be serious Excuse for a minute. For so this is three points to, to the men. You got me. Point number one. If you're that man who gets dressed up for church, you have the title of pastor, elder, deacon, bishop, Bible worker. You're, you're, you're that guy that everyone sees in the church and, and everyone looks up to you and, and, and sees that you're the best thing since life bred spiritually and you're treating your wife like crap and you're not loving her as Christ loved the church <clears throat> and he gave himself up for the church and died for the church, if you're that guy, stop it. Mm. Because you're sending a signal to your family that there's a there's a fraud in the house. Mm. And no one knows that but your family and you want to keep them quiet to continue so you can perpetrate the fraud. Mm. So you reap what you sow. <clears throat> That's all I'm gonna say. Mercy. Because if you do that, and not loving your wife, and you're doing other things that not that you're not protecting your wife and you're not protecting your children because you're doing things that are a facade, you reap what you sow. It's coming back to you. Wow. So you can stop. You can say, I'm tripping. I need to get it fixed or whatever you gotta do. But for that man, Try not to say the things that I want to say. Say it nice. Say it nicely. Mm -hmm. All right, my wife says say it nicely. <clears throat> well, because you know uh, the, the the wife is looking at you when you're out perpetrating a fraud, wondering when is the real man gonna show up. That's what I was gonna say. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you, baby. You just triggered it. Mm -hmm. If that's you, change your name. Don't call yourself man. Mm. Call yourself boy. You going in, huh? Little boy. Because mm -mm. the scripture says when I was a child, I acted like a child. <clears throat> I thought like a child. 
but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So stay in the playground where the little kids play mm. until you're really ready to play in the big playground until you get it together. So change your name from man to man. Little M, M A N, small case M. <laughs> All right, number two, real quick, Sonia needs to go talk to the women. I do. Number two, okay. yes, you do. If you're that man who may have violated the marriage and whether infidelity, some type of trust has been broken and you violated it, then you have the obligation to continue to be humble, continue to show your wife that you can be trusted. So you can't put yourself in positions where there's a question about what you're doing, where you're going, especially if you're in the same arena that you were in before when you violated the marriage. Mm. So for you, <clears throat> Be mindful that that hurt that you cause is going to be there forever. Your wife is going to go through a process of healing. And we pray that she's healed from it, but she will never forget. And that scar is still there. Mm. And every time you do something that's going to cause a, a, a graze in the marriage, a decision that you make, the people that you may be around, that you choose to be around, if she has a problem with it, she has a right to have a problem with it and you need to cater to her. Point number three, real quick. Point number three. If well, and as a man, you may want to avoid it because it's not your most favorable moment. And in avoiding it, sometimes you continue to breach the security of your wife. So you've got to put her needs in front of yours when it comes to that. Good. Number three, if you're walling out. <laughs> you know, Nick Cannon got a show called Walling Out. Mm -hmm. I love that show. I never watched wilding it. Walling out, walling out, hey, 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 out. <laughs> okay. If you're walling out, like doing whatever you want to do, like you like I said before, you've lost your everlasting glob stopper mind. What's a glob stopper? That's Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. Oh, okay. Glob stopper. Mm -hmm. You lost that mind of yours, that you're just doing what you want to do, go where you want, seeing who you want, and think it's okay. I gotta do. I gotta get biblical. You reap what you sow. You're hurting people. You're hurting your wife. You're hurting your children. And at some point, you're going to find yourself alone mm. and miserable. Mm. You're going to be a lonely old man sitting in a corner by yourself because that doesn't last. So, stop walling out. Mm. Okay? All right. Those are your three points. Three there points. Go, throwing the cards. Three points. All right. I don't to know if man. I have three points for the women, but I, I can I can talk to the women. Talk to the women. So wives, you know, um, if you got married and the last thing on your radar is helping your husband, you need to stop that. You need to realize that God knew that your husband would need a helper, and it's not the helper. It's not the kind of help that comes from cooking and doing the laundry and washing the dishes and even bringing in income to help pay the bills because honestly a roommate could do that. A mom or dad could do that. A sibling could do that. The help is so much deeper than that. The help requires you to see your husband and see where he needs your help emotionally and spiritually. And so if you are doing everything but that, please stop redirect yourself, refocus yourself, ask God to show you how to balance all those things. And I know it's not easy because some of you have small children, some of you are uh, middle-aged, and some of you are in the sandwich generation taking care of parents and children just like me. And so, you know, it's hard. I'm not saying that it's easy to do, but part of the reason that your husband may not be fulfilling his role as husband is because he needs your help emotionally to deal with some stuff. So that's number one. Number two is, I just thought of the number two. If you are calling your husband out of his name, if you are uh, saying he's not a man or to man up, or are you know, comparing him to other people, that other men that you think he should be like, please don't do that because that just continues to emasculate him. And it's going actually against what you're trying to accomplish. I would re recommend that you talk about how his behavior is causing you to feel as opposed to calling him those names. Mm. So stop that, don't do that. 
And then number three, men are visual. And this may seem a little superficial, mm -hmm. but men are visual. I know that's right. Give him something to see. Come on now. Uh, okay, take care of yourself. Mm. Make sure you brush your teeth and, you know, you get those those girls up and tight, you know? <laughs> Did you just smell my go arm? Go ahead, go ahead, just focus. Make sure, you know, so you, 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 your you're getting your hair done and, you know, you're wearing clothes that are that accommodate your shape. You don't have to dress like everybody else. Mm. Get clothes that accommodate your shape, but show that you've put some effort into yourself because men are visual. All right. Mm. So those are my three. That was that was that was flavorful. Thank you. <laughs> Flavor. That was tasty. <laughs> that was. That was. That was, that was, that was, that was <laughs> oh no, you didn't. Oh Ooh. Lord, we gotta edit that part. No, we ain't. Not, so some of you are doing that, and I say bravo. Yeah. I say bravo. There's a whole other long list of things you could do or not do, and some of the wives you saw the videos of some of the things that they would they were sharing. But mm. those are my top three. So we <clears throat> wanted to be uh, transparent and having a transparent conversation with just a specific mm -hmm. group of of. Um, individuals who are at that place where it's just you're just doing what you want to do with no throwing caution to the wind mm -hmm. uh, so now that you know what, what you're, you're gonna, gonna do, do with, with it. it thank you for watching subscribe to the channel share it like it we thank you so much uh, for being a part of our lives and be transparent in your lives so God bless you and until next time take great care of yourselves